Okay, everybody. Good morning, friends. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Sunday from California to the world. Yes, it is so wonderful to know and to feel the energy that we are connected. It doesn't matter where you are, far or close to us, or here in California, Arkansas, for that matter, <laughs> or Brazil. <laughs> we are all united through love. So we are so appreciative uh, of your presence, of your energy, and the commitment to study, to evolve, to share, to learn, and be together as a wonderful community of workers of light. So welcome to Bezerra Spiritual Healing. We are very excited to start another service today. But before um, uh, we talk about our announcements and start our um, you know, the service today, I would like to ask if we have any volunteers today for our opening prayer. I don't want to put anybody on the spot, anybody who is crying or anybody who is, <laughs> is smiling. Is there anyone who would like to volunteer and I'm say an opening I prayer? I can do. Yeah. I can do for you. Yeah. Okay, Tanya. Thank you so much. Welcome. So, beloved brothers and sisters, it is a blessing, as our dear sister said, to be together, gathering in this beautiful environment and this beautiful spiritual light, life. So, united in our hearts and minds, together. Let flow from our hearts the best within us. Let our mind together go to our Heavenly Father, our Divine Mother, in gratitude for this opportunity. Let we go to our beloved Jesus Christ in gratitude for all he has done for us, for all the lessons, the spiritual support and examples. Let our minds and heart go together to our spiritual guides, spiritual directors, spiritual helpers, these great spiritual consolers all over the globe that work to keep the light shining here on the earth and this dimensional level that we are all gathering together. And let our, our mind and hearts go together to each sentient being on the earth. united as the sons and daughters of God. Let we remind ourselves that we are divine children of Almighty Father, Mother God. We thank you, Father, for this day's lessons for this day teachings and for these days that we have this great opportunity to progress, to understand, to shine our knowledges. We thank you so very much, Heavenly Father, for all the blessings of the great spirits of virtues and for the commandments and the power that you have put inside of us to make our choices. And in these days that we are going through a lot of tribulations and teachings, let's remind ourselves that we are not alone. 
and that we have your great light shining within us. So reminding this beautiful current of light can unite it together and all love your children's together can manifest your righteousnesses here and now. So Heavenly Father, in your name, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our dear Mother Mary, and all the great consoler spirits, guides, and protectors, we ask for your guidance, for your protection, for your illumination, and for the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical healing that we are here on the earth in the physical and spiritual dimensions are in need. In your name, we are open our service today. And so be it, and so it is. Thank you, Tanya. So be it. Thank you, Tanya, for this beautiful and deep connection and uh, wonderful way to start our meeting today. I want to welcome everybody, new faces, at least new to me. Uh, we are so happy that you're joining us and all the familiar faces because as I said, we are a family, the BSH family. So I would like to um, emphasize and uh, tell you guys about our offerings. So there's a lot of opportunities for us who want to uh, educate ourselves and education is key for our evolution. And there are so many books, so many classes that are ongoing uh, that we, you know, we recommend that you take advantage of. So to start with, I want to talk about the fraternal counseling, which is every Wednesday by appointment only. So normally the slots go from four to 7 p.m. Pacific time. And the easiest way to get a hold of us is either emailing us at info at bshcenter.org. So a time, a slot will be selected for you so you can have your time to talk about what is going on with you. So it's amazing help with the services for free. Um, so if you do uh, or you're facing or you're going through something that you need to have someone to listen, to share with, of course, it's all confidential. Please uh, do reach out to us. You can always also send us a, a message here via the WeChat, uh, not WeChat, but the chat box. Another wonderful class that is happening uh, is the gospel, the Spiritist's teaching. So every Sunday at 6 p.m., PST here Pacific time with sunshine back in collaboration with divine light. So Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. All the information uh, will be emailed to you if you have given us your uh, email address. If you don't have that, please do share your information with us now via chat, the chat box here so we can add you to our newsletter because you're going to be receiving information as well as the links that you can access in order to participate on those classes. Another wonderful class that is going on is the Spiritist Book study group that started back in March. It's every Thursday from 6.30 to 7.30 PST with our sister Dushka. Uh, again, we always have the information on our newsletter. If you do need that information, we are happy to provide to you. Another wonderful book that is being studied, uh, it's called Happy Life Book, Happy Life Study Group. It started uh, in June and it's every Thursday, 7.35 p.m. to 8 PST. Um, and then we also have the Spiritist for the Youth that started in March. It's the second and the fourth Sundays of the month. It's in the morning, 8.30 to 9.30 PST with our friend uh, Brian. So as you can see, um, oh, and also super important, there is a daily prayer, uh, Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. Uh, PST, and on Saturdays at 11.30 a.m. 
So it's about 15 yeah. to 20 minutes. Uh, and the, the goal is to emanate positive thoughts and pray for our mother Gaia, for our earth. Kiki, do you yeah, have something? Sorry, to just, yeah, just, just one correction. I didn't update the, um, our, our announcements. We changed okay. the, the Saturday instead of 11.30. We are doing Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. It's easier for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. Monday, to, Monday okay. to Saturday, 6 p.m. Monday to Saturday. Okay. So Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. So my here. friends, as you can see, yes, it is. Thank you so much, Kiki. Uh, there are plenty of options. You may be able to join once or twice or depending on your availability. But the important things to know is even if you can't physically join, if you can take the moment to connect, because we are all connected to our vibration through prayers, that is a good way also to be, you know, um, in, in, in touch with us and also help our planet, right? So there's always opportunities. So um, I also want to say that, um, as I said, there are other uh, classes that you may be able to join and um, emphasize about the fraternal council. If there's anything that you're feeling, your heart, you know, is tight and you need a friend, no judgment, just somebody to hear, you know, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever lesson that you're learning, we are here to assist you. So please do take advantage of that, um, uh, that opportunity. All right. So I am very excited to hear about our uh, lecture today. Uh, we have our sister, Nora Brazil. That's her beautiful name. She's not from Brazil, though, but she is Brazilian at heart, and I know that. <laughs> uh, she's going to be talking today about spiritual connection with the environment. How important it is to understand our environment and how are we connected uh, with whatever it is around us? And for those who have not met uh, Nora, she is a middle school teacher. She's a wonderful teacher, and she really enjoys working with young teens. The spiritism has made Nora's life much more fun, interesting, and meaningful. In other words, it has sparked more questions about life and who we are. Aren't we all curious to know what our missions are and who we are here on Earth? What's our mission? Due to the pandemic, open up uh, many virtual spirits center doors, Nora has been able to connect with more a spiritual family. With that, she met the BSH family. Yay, we are so happy that she's part of our family. Such an amazing addition. <laughs> she's deeply grateful to BSH and for this opportunity to continue learning together. And we are grateful for her presence, for her light and insights. Uh, she's, as I said, a good teacher. So she's always helping us to evolve you know, asking good questions and studying together. With that said, my friends, I would like you to help me welcome our dear sister, Nora Brazil, who will be talking about uh, the spiritual connection with the environment. Nora, the stage is yours. Yay! <laughs> okay, and so I'm going to share my screen. Um, but before I do, no, let me do this. Before I do, I want to say thank you so much, and I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. And if I talk really fast, it's probably when I'm a little bit nervous. I always do this before I teach with my students. I always get the butterflies in the stomach, and then eventually I will probably slow down. Just uh, it's, it's my first time with you guys, so <laughs> I'm so nervous. Okay, here we go. You are a pro. You are a pro, Laura, and you are among family, so <laughs> you are fine. Sweet. I'm going to remove, there you go, so that I don't see myself and <laughs> just focus. All right, dear friends. So uh, today's topic is a spiritual connection to the environment. I'm going to put my timer because I can talk a lot and it is very in depth and I don't know how far we're going to get in the slides. Uh, there might be some where I just kind of uh, skip around, um, but it's so important for us to really think about these questions. And this study is actually, uh, oops, let me see. This study is uh, a little bit, it's gonna have a little bit of this science. So I started off with trying to find what do spiritist books talk about um, the environment. So it's more of an educational tool. And I think it's with the conversation that we will kind of, each of us were, um, would like to participate 
what, how do we connect, right? And I think uh, for me, as I was studying this, it's so much, I was like, wow, there is so much out there, but I do have to invite each and every one of us. We do have to do some inferencing and we do have to do some self-reflection because again, we connect to um, where we're at as far as our, our levels, right? So in the beginning, it's a lot of just the science, understanding what is our planet Earth, because when we connect, Oh, sometimes we, we connect to trends, oh, recycling, oh, this and that. But do we really understand the fundamentals? So uh, there's going to be a little bit of that straight from the book Genesis. That one's, it has so much information. Then we're going to name a couple of scientists. So let's sort of a little bit into the actual science. And then we're coming right back into what are the factors that are really affecting the environment and finally trying to bring it back into spiritism as much as possible right so just as a reminder because we are going to be talking about science in here it's so important for us to uh, have this reminder that as we are advancing our ideas are also evolving so even if you know we study um or have known of stages in our evolution and humanity about how we weren't taking uh, as much care as we are now of the environment. It's all part of this role of us growing and understanding. Um, it says here, item 14, this is from the uh, Genesis book, incertitude concerning things of the future li uh, life has made men uh, reject many of the duties of the material life with a kind of a frenzy, right? Such is inevitable now. In other words, we were so afraid before to find the truth, and now it's it's gonna be coming to us. So it's almost like we're at this uh, middle school age. So it was funny, yeah, we're adolescents. I work with adolescents. So there's a lot of these openings and understandings, but sometimes we're like trying to figure out ourselves. So it's kind of like in the sense that we are right now in the environment, okay? and important thing to remember is that the spiritual material worlds they are in constant contact so we're not separate from one another so as we start thinking about our role in science uh excuse me in the environment we are part of the environment it's not the, oh that's the planet oh those are the animals those are the plants that's the history and then we think oh we're on top you know but actually no we're all very much integrated into this one system this is a beautiful reference here because now we're looking for where is nature talked about in Genesis in the section called Laws and Forces. Um, it's super interesting. I'm actually going to read it because it involves a little bit of some of this earth science and the spirituality. If one of those unknown beings who spend their ephemeral existence in the depths of the dark regions of the ocean, if one of those polygastric animals, one of the narrates miserable animalcules, who only knew the Ichiophagous fish in the submarine forest received suddenly the gift of intelligence, the faculty of studying the world and of establishing a reasonable idea of that living nature which develops in their midst and of the terrestrial world which is not now included in the field of their observation. If by the marvelous effect of some new power, this strange race of beings should be lifted out of their unbroken darkness to the surface of the sea, not far from the fertile banks of an isle covered with luxuriant vegetation to the genius sun, dispenser of a beneficent warmth, what judgment would they pass? What theories of universal creation would be theirs? Theories to be soon effaced by larger appreciation, but by theories still as relatively incomplete as the first. Such is, O oh man, an image of all your speculative science. So it's almost like, of course, the first thing is to even think of ourselves that we come from this, imagining our own uh, evolution, being part of this marine life that all of a sudden from this marine life and in this darkness in the water, we start to be on land and then we're on land. All of a sudden we start to gain these um, facilities that then evolve into our consciousness. And now we have this understanding and even we have developed our our senses and everything to even comprehend the warmth of the sun but it says here we're still incomplete right so um it's beautiful to think about this because there's still more to be discovered but at the same time it's a reminder hey we are still connected we come from here we're all in this together so now all of a sudden it's like the appreciation 
for nature is it's increasing at least when i read this right and as we continue because now all of a sudden a lot of us when we think of the environment we are always taking far back oh my gosh global warming the world is ending and then we watch so many movies out there which of course we do have to take care but genesis in this section the diversity of the world kind of makes us way hold up Woo, think about this right and it says here i decided to speak of the infinite power of nature so all of a sudden it's like hey this is not your guys the, the planet she has something going on right i i, I call her as she right uh, so now it's precisely in this respect that it is important to reform our judgment cast your eyes upon any region whatsoever on your globe and upon any one of the products of its nature do you not recognize the seal of the infinite variety and the proof of unequal activity? Do you not see upon the wing of the light canary bird, upon the petals of an opening rosebud, the fascinated fecundity of this beautiful nature? When your studies are applied to the winged beings which leave the air, when they descend to the violet of the woods, to the depths of the ocean, and all and everywhere you read this universal truth, all powerful nature acts according to place, time, and circumstances. It is a unit of its general harmony, but a multiple in its production. It handles the sun as a drop of water, its people an immense world with living beings, with the same facility as it opens the egg deposited by the autumn insect. Since animated nature commences with the soul fight and ends with the man, since the atmosphere feeds terrestrial life, since the liquid element is incessantly renewed, since your seasons are succeeded in this life of the phenomena which divide them. Do not conclude that millions of worlds are similar. And it says every world has its own unique characteristics. And right now we just got a glimpse of this beautiful, precious planet mm -hmm. and everything that's in it. And this is such an important thing because now all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. He uses the word millions, and if you love a math probability, when you think of probability of millions and millions, and what are the odds of ending in such a beautiful place, it almost stops to, and you're like, wow, we have to think about this, right? And look at everything that we have here. Look at everything that planet Earth has and that diversity. And then we start to really, really understand and appreciate it. Now, uh, the next couple of slides are actually different time frames again and this is a more from a spiritist science perspective of course we can always look up a geography or geology book and we can do that research but i wanted to really focus a little bit on genesis because i thought it was very interesting um and genesis has a uh, different ways how it breaks down now the stages of the earth because in order for us to connect to it we got to know a little bit about her, right? That's really the, the key here. So it has the, ge ge oh, let me take this right here, the geological sketch. Then there is a mosaic genesis. And then I'm going to show you something from a book. But uh, my favorite one was actually the geological sketch because it breaks down the planet into different regions and what was happening, right? Um, we have the primary period. And right here, there was chaos. It was like all, all smoke, right? There was no vegetation. Then planet goes into a transition period. So there was a little bit of life, but it wasn't, there were no trees or anything, right? There were like mushrooms, mosses, ferns. Then the secondary period, all of a sudden, it's like everything disappears, right? Mm -hmm. There's no more uh, life here. But then the tertiary period, all of a sudden, life starts to come back. As it says here, the waters flow down into the lowest places, leaving vast continents of dry lands or summits of isolated mountains, which form islands. There were mammals, animals, big animals, such as elephants, rhinoceros, right? They even had little species, of course, in the water. Then all of a sudden, there's the deluge period, right? Which is um, uh, all of a sudden, we, we have the beans here, but then the water comes and it destroys the whole life and then we have the post deluge which is where we're at right all of a sudden the planet is finds its establishment and now we have life and that's for animals and that's in part of that we come in 
and the Mosaic Genesis, which is really interesting, right? Because the Bible too has uh, sort of the, the, the talking about earth and its creation, because, you know, um, how can we not appreciate environment? We, we, we try to understand it. So it's very similar. It's if you do decide your friends to go and study Genesis, or you have done so, you might have noticed that what changes are kind of like the periods, but the characteristics in each period is the same. But on this side right here, this is the only difference from the previous one, because it talks about when the Bible says on the first day, the heavens and earth were created. The second day, then the firmament. The third day, and we see how even like that, um, it goes hand in hand with the stages of the planet. All right. So just to, I, I think I'm going to, oh yeah. And then this one here. So this is a, I think it's called Planetary 101. I left it on in the living room. It's this beautiful book and it has, it talks a little bit about earth, but in this particular model, we can see here um, how it, everything's obeyed by laws, right? The laws of nature, everything has a place and a set. And as we have been evolving, we can see how the earth is to transitioning as well, right? So um, that's just a visual. And so we see how, um, I think right now we're right here, right? So there's Mother Earth and how could we not appreciate her for her force? Okay, let me check my mm -hmm. time, great. So I wanted to focus on this post diluvial or um, this stage right here, post deluge, right? I apologize, it, it's, it goes back and forth from different versions of the book. And I wanna read it because now, all of a sudden, this is calling our attention. Here we come. The equilibrium once reestablished on the surface of the globe, animal and vegetable life promptly resumed their course. The consolidated soil that had taken a firmer position, the purer air agreed with more delicate organs. The sun was shown with all its splendor through a limpid atmosphere produced with its less and less suffocating more vivifying atmosphere than of the interior furnace. The earth was inhabited by less ferocious animals. The more succulent vegetables offered a fi finer alimentation, right? All the land was prepared for a new host, which must come to have the earth. It was then that man appeared, the last created being, he whose intelligence henceforth must concur with the general progress by progressing, progressing himself. So here we are, right? And that, that's where we come from. The Genesis also kind of talks about the Adamic race, right? Adam and Eve that are mentioned. And we are invited in this book to also remember to not take things literal, but it proposes a thought for us thinking about Adam, Adamic race, right? Because when they arrive on earth, right? Um, they already had some, um, some knowledge with them. And it gives the analogy, it's like when Americas was discovered, right? We already had natives here in the Americas. And so in this process is so interesting because now we start to see how are humans relating to planet Earth, right? So they were more advanced uh, than those that had preceded the Earth, more intelligent. For instance, they were industrious in the arts and the sciences without having passed through an intellectual infancy. Um, so um, let's see what it is. Uh, and nothing opposes itself to the idea they might have only been here since a few thousand years, which would be in contradiction to neither geological facts nor to, to the anthropological observations, but tend to be the contrary to confirm it. So we have to be, again, very careful looking at our different stages. And I think, you know, of course, Alan Kardec and the spirits did a great job to just kind of remind us to keep in mind the idea of not taking things that are, but to look at them from that higher spiritual perspective. But of course, if you know the story, um, it was in, in, impossible for them to have been the only beings, right? We know that Adam and Eve's kind of able that are, they, they went out and they out oh, to spread, you know, that that's what we were, that's what the um, God wanted to happen. And so he did not uh, take away nature of man. He made nature for us to co-create and cohabitate with it. And we know that life had already existed. And so this Adamic rage had a uh, race, excuse me, had already had some form of influence in the environment. That's right. In Genesis, we continue a very interesting concept, which is called the soul of the earth, right? And the soul of the earth, it, uh, they made a really interesting reference to 
um, um, to the spirit to have a new. I, I don't my my I don't know any French, so I did it. I was able to find thank this God and the spirits a PDF version because in there it actually talks a little bit about what do you mean the soul of the earth, right? And so by the soul of the earth, we can understand that it's not the actual planet, but it's the collective of spirits. But it's not just any collective of spirits. It says that God in his infinite wisdom and everything being perfect and complete, he will entrust the top direction of moral destinies and the progress of its inhabitants. A mission that can only be devolved to a person of imminent superior knowledge and wisdom. The earth does not have a soul belonging to its own because it is not an organized being like those we are endowed with. She has millions of spirits responsible for its balance, its harmony, and its vegetation. It's heat, light, seasons, incarnation of the animals, as well as watch of men. The earth progressed as it formed. She progressed always without ever stopping until the moment when it has reached its maximum perfection. All that is life and matter in her progresses at the same time. For its progress is accomplished, the spirits responsible for watching over in its products pro progress on their side by their work or give away to more advanced spirits. Right now, she's touching on a beautiful transition, on a t transition from good to bad, from mediocre, beautiful, right? So this was written back in 1868, already talking about a planet. It says here, there is a question here that was says, do not the, uh, well, what about inhabitants so that are they destroying the planet? It says here, do not the, the response was, excuse me, do not the inhabitants of the earth work for its material improvement. So consider all the spirits incarnate as part of those responsible for advancing in it at the same time as they progress themselves. It is the community of all these intelligence embodied and disembodied including the delegate superior, which properly speaking, constitutes the soul of the earth of which a part you are, right? Incarnate and disembodied are the, are the bees that work on the building of the hive under the direction of the head spirit. This one is in the head, the others are the arm, right? So this is super powerful. And even though it was written in 1968, we can totally uh, bring it down now to 2021, you know, Jesus being the governor of the earth, and then we have all of us collaborating. There it is. We're all collaborating to work on Mother Earth, you know, on this planet, because she's also, yeah, as it says here, she, she's counting on us, right, really, for the balance, for the harmony and everything, but she's going to progress. It's going to progress, right? Um, and so now I'm going to step a little bit to, okay, so that's the spiritist stuff that we were able to find. I'm checking my time, right? Now we have some important people that I'm just going to throw them out there, dear friends, encourage you to do research because this is a lot of science stuff and um, hopefully nobody's being feeling overwhelmed right now. But Charles Darwin was someone that we can, when we never would talk about the environment, of what we are, who we are, we need to bring in Charles, right? Um, because he was one that actually started and said, hey, there's something out there. And I was reading a little bit how even though he is portrayed as he, he's very much against the religion aspect, which, you know, it, it just depends where our beliefs are. He had he was influenced by a man in his time that did respect um, the creation by God that, you know, and so but in his book, The Origin of Species, he says nature is the agent in Darwin's theory of descent with modification. It is nature embodying the forces that act on the process of natural selection, which determines which species survives and which goes extinct. So I'm not going to talk about the actual, this is not an evolution study, but just to bring up that he was already kind of bringing that attention to us as beings on this planet. Hey, there's more than just random. Um, because prior to, to Charles, and, and I mean, bring up even Mendel, Gregor Mendel, people thought that it, everything was at random. That So what did that mean? That people didn't appreciate more than, than as we start to get more educated in this. Um, for example, I took a course and I remember we talked about how back in the day, they would have these open markets and they would sell um, cattle and stuff and people uh, thought, oh my gosh, right? Uh, what random uh, oxen or mules or horses, whatever, the, they, they, um, 
they were born at random. And so, and it wasn't like that. It was actually, there was genetics behind it, right? Um, the, 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 the products or the, the children or whatever, don't just come out just like that. There is order. And so now we start to think, of course, as spiritists and putting the science together, these are the laws that we are studying, right? And so Gregory Mendel, are just a side note, because I'm always so fascinated by him, you know, he was a monk and a scientist. And interestingly, now, why are, Gregor was in Austria doing his studies and Charles, they were doing them at the same time and they never met and their work was never really discovered until much later. Uh, so it was interesting. And, and the appreciation with Gregor and, or Mendel, right, in the classical geneticist, he had a, he was so connected to nature and he had a little garden and he did the same thing in observation wait a minute it's not at random that the offspring are, are coming that's the word i wanted to think when i was talking about the cattle the offspring are not coming out at random i'm looking at my plants and something's happening so he's creating all these experiments and all of a sudden it's like you know this is so important and the appreciation that we start to have with the environment because now we treat it with respect because now what, what are we seeing oh my gosh wait a minute Plants have an order. Animals have order as well, right? The DNA, and, and again, we can go into all of this in, in another one because it's just even thinking about DNA and how much it has evolved along with the environment. But there's this other scientist who kind of took Darwin uh, and, and extended because now he is the one that coins ecology. So finally, we're coming into the, 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 the branch of science that we have that really helps us understand, right? And I'm going to read parts of this. And I, I know that I'm not saying too much of my thoughts, but really, because when it comes to science, dear friends, it's a very, uh, it's so different than a study when we're talking about the heart, we will get there, I promise, okay? I wish all the more to call attention to this intermediate links because just now every contribution must seem especially welcome that can provide special detailed research toward deciding the question of the gradual development of organic beings from common ancestral forms. The greatest theories that Charles Darwin recently developed on the origin of species in animal and plant kingdom by means of natural selection or the preservation of the perfected races in the struggle for life, and with which a new epoch has begun for systematic organic natural science, have suddenly given such significance to the question, and this is a part here, of the relationships among the organisms and such a fundamental importance to the demonstration of a continuous linking that even the smallest contribution can play a role in further solutions of the problems that will come, right? So he's talking about, hey, wait a minute, now let's bring a branch because now let's study nature. Let's look at all these things. And because of, you know, Ernst Haeckel and, and, and him coining all these other scientists to started doing research in specific things. And there's a lot of research in ecology that, um, branches into, uh, I know, for instance, just uh, populations, uh, there are studies done on atmosphere, the soil, there's a lot in the soil, there are people that focus on different species. I had a professor, I took an ecology course, and his specialization was on caterpillars. And we just studied a lot about caterpillars, and we just got to love those little guys. And I, and I bring that up because it's like, wait a minute, that that's what's happening here that was my epiphany when i took that course all of a sudden it's like i'm seeing caterpillars in such a different way because of that education and that awareness right now i want to bring this guy here because he's a little bit more modern and he is not mainstream science so i'm but it's good to bring this because we we, we are seeing how our awareness is opening up all of this. And Michael Behe wrote this book called Gar Darwin's Black Box. And so he's not necessarily saying, you know, Darwin was completely wrong. It, it's just this whole idea of intelligent design. Wait a minute. Maybe there's something behind all of this, right? And the mission statement says it all that in their statement, they say they were here to understand human beings and nature are the result of an intelligent design rather than a blind 
and undirected process, right? So this is so important because if the community, if society started to see how we're so integrated, and then of course started seeing that this intelligent design, a spiritist, is God, right? All of a sudden, wouldn't we start to treat everything around the planet so so differently? And he wrote another book that I haven't read, but I'm I'm, I'm thinking of, of of really reading. It might be really interesting. He says Darwin's mechanism works by a process of devolution, not evolution, right? So on the ever surface, evolution can make something uh, help some can help make something look and act different, but it doesn't have the ability to create anything at the genetic level. So it's the whole idea. So devolution, it's like it's not like we're creating a new species, a new race. And I know that in this book, uh, Glorious Day, Divaldo also mentions about how we think because we have the human genome project, we have um, all the the resources to study DNA and everything that we think we're, we're the c causing that. But devolution is like, no, it's like power coming from up down, right? So it's almost like the law of conservation of energy and thermodynamics, which is uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be modified and structured. And that's exactly what is happening. So I thought that was great. But now we have had, I wanted to, they're all males. I'm like, no, we got to bring in some female power, right? And we have these three um, pillars as uh, environmental activists. We have Vandana Shiva. There's this really controversial, really cool out there um, a documentary that she talks about agriculture, right? Because of all of these um, gen mod genetics, we're modifying so many of the seeds and what is happening. And she's talking about let's preserve the natural seeds of the planet. Of course, we know Greta Thunberg about um global warming and there's someone else here that I wanted to bring to our attention uh she's rachel, rachel carson and she wrote these beautiful books about nature and how we need to start looking at it differently and i i came across her in a toxicology course that i took because we talked a lot about the toxins in our environment and um, she had already warned at her time about let's be careful with the type of chemicals that that we use and how did she know that uh, she loved nature and one of her favorite things was to sit in her her porch and just observe nature and write about it and one of these times she noticed that um the, the the nature was dying and it was because of the pesticides that they were using and so forth so it might bring ring a bell and, and and all of these ladies here they they love to spend time with nature vandana herself um in her documentary her home is so simple and so humble and and her backyard is this it's it's a farm because she's just playing around with seeds right so we see this characteristics of these beautiful souls that are bringing uh, awareness to that now Let's talk about what are some of those factors that we we're dealing with because here we have all this all these tools and somehow what's still happening right you know and so some of the factors that are and I got this straight from online right it's the chemical safety the air pollution we have the climate change and natural disasters we have diseases caused by microbes the lack of access to healthcare we have infrastructure issues poor water quality and global environmental issues. So um, I'm gonna go real quickly. I think I still have time one by one. And these are not my words because um, uh, they're all again, uh, <laughs> we'll get to the hard part, I, I promise, okay? So chemical is super important for us to be careful because of the toxins that exist. So I know that there's a, um, a, a society that specifically tries to measure where the chemicals are, especially those household products that we are intaking. I know that, for instance, there is a whole um, ordeal with the asbestos and the chemical society fought tremendously. I know they fell one time, but then the next time they were able to uh, modify this, right? So they're always constantly make sure that we care for everything that we use around the house, the soaps, the cleaning products, right? So we have to be careful with air pollution. Um, there's a lot that come that is actually produced by our car and truck exhaust. Like we remember when everybody was in quarantine, right? 
nobody was using all of that stuff what happened the the world the planet just cleared up because there was none of that um that stuff so we there are some uh health effects if we don't take care of it um and there's just some numbers to talk about it but just to show you here right this is how lungs can look if they're affected just by air pollution major pollutants include carbon monoxide sulfur oxide hydrocarbons um, particulate matter, nitrogen oxides, lead, and, and of course the ozone layer, which we're all mostly familiar with. This right here is another thing that we are having, which is the effects of the acid rain. So when the acid rains comes in, it just um, it, cre it reacts with the marble and it causes the structure to go from the yellow. So now it's changed here. It's the ta maha. I think that's how you say it. So those are just things for us to be aware. The health, the ozone, <laughs> right? We 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 need to be very careful with how we're treating our ozone. And and actually, I, I'm I'm going to speak a little bit from the heart because sometimes when I'm doing a prayer for for planet Earth, I'm just I'm envisioning that stratosphere layer that does the exchange of gases and just sending it so so much love. But that exchange of gases um we need them and because it's depleting right the the radiation from the sun it hits it stronger and it's of course warming up uh, our planet a little bit but it does have uh health effects that we need to be very very careful um there's the C cfc's which are non-toxic of flavor chemists containing stuff kind of like aerosol sprays right solvents uh halocarbons this is all of the science stuff. We have even air pollution affects the vegetation, right? Um, bleaching, color changes, decreased forest growth. Uh, domestic animals can be polluted as well. And like right now, we saw it with the Tamaha, Taj Maha, right? The uh, sulfur dioxide effects that can uh, create changes in the buildings. We have radiation, and we do have natural radiation. And it's probably not the concern. The most, the biggest concern is the man-made radiation. But we have to be very, very careful when it comes to that. And of course, the uh, the biggest one here was Chernobyl, right? And that was actually an accident. And when I was taking this course, we talked about how, you know, um, most of the disasters have been through accidents. And the lack of policies that exist out there. And so that's another food for thought. It is we're praying. And I know when we get together, let's pray for all of these policies so that these companies that they have better um, protection. If there is an issue, right, or something that they get taxed, that, um, that they have better structures that contain all of this to prevent accidents. Food additives. Food is also something that we, we we don't realize, but it's also something to be very careful, right? Um, I won't have time to read them all, but just to point out that labels are so important and there are people and, and scientists right in this particular branch that make sure that they, they study because there could be toxins in our foods, right? So even when we go to the supermarket and we see things or we do the uh, farmer's market, right? Even all the production to make that, thinking about the toxins that are put in, in, in the soil and all, all of that needs to be regulated. And if we're not careful, we can also um, get some side effects from all of this, especially the carcinogen, carcinogenics, right? Um, and so this is just, uh, just to see how um, it was to give you guys a mental break because I know I've been talking a lot. So I just do a little mental break. And in ancient times, uh, they would actually fool the people. I think it was Egyptian times. Um, instead of using, um, they would uh, they would use acorn and coffee or dusting cocoa. They would use uh, copper to add color to it, and it wasn't the real thing, right? So because we have these regulations, it's not, <laughs> uh, we're not being tricked anymore. Okay, currently. Okay, let's get back to it because I only have like nine minutes. Currently, there are 2,800 substances that are used as food additives. And these are all nodes that I took in my class. Uh, so I'm giving credit to my professor. We also talked a little bit about our household products. 
Um, and these are just um, the toxins that we come across. And again, a lot of these um, are when they come, when they're exposed in a huge amount, because some of our products do have some of these, right? These are huge amounts. So just to look at our labels, see what we're, we're intaking um, and make small changes. I was listening to a TED talk because sometimes when we get to this part of the environment and we're talking about it, oh, it's so expensive, oh, it's impossible. But sometimes it's those little changes that we modify that make a difference. Like I'll use one, right? We all have shampoo. Yeah, I always look for the ones that is parabens free that has not been tested on animals. Like just those little small um, choices that we make can already make a difference. And of course, now let's get back to like climate change. How, I mean, you, I, I know that we've been praying because uh, California has been dealing right now with the wildfires, but we know that about two years ago, uh, Australia also had a lot of impacts and everywhere. Uh, I know this past year, we, here in Texas, we were in 20 degree weather. What, what, what was that about, you know, the hurricanes and all of that, again, it's, because of our climate change. We have to be very careful. The diseases caused by the microbes, we have to be very careful. For example, if we are food poisoned by E. coli, what are we doing to prevent all of this from happening? Lack of access to healthcare. That's another issue that we need to be aware and that's happening, especially now with with COVID and stuff, right? This is, if anything, healthcare has been brought to awareness that it's also important to take care of our environment because we are all part of that. Our infrastructures, believe it or not, is also something that is of health uh, concern because it increases car accidents, access to drinking water and to very different places, right? Poor water quality and um, it, it it's it, it was a shocker when I and, and I was thinking about because we are our plan is I believe 71 percent of water but when we think of water right because I was like how what do you mean that the, the water is gonna go extinct how it's 71 percent but it's the drinking quality right and that's what where people are having a hard access to it and also we're polluting our waters every day right so those are just for us to see how we're we're, uh, we're, we're treating our planet and, and to think what we just studied in the beginning about how beautiful and all the, the stages and then all of a sudden we're not taking this and global environment issues, pollution, ultraviolet, we've talked about it. Just to think how all these health effects, these toxins that are being created, they really affect our kidneys, our respiratory system, our liver and our nervous system, right? There's one toxin that I wanted to talk about um, that we don't really think of it as a toxin, but it is a high levels of alcohol. Um, if you study a little bit of biochemistry and how the body has to go through two processes in order for it to break down. And it's in these two processes that it, the cells really dehydrate and there's this huge, huge energy exchange that's happening as the body's trying to get rid of some of the toxins from here. So just to, to say that this is also an environmental concern. Um, and this was actually in a college course that I took in toxicology, and I was quite impressed. And I said, you know, that is true. We These are just things that we don't talk about, but it is happening. We are sometimes putting a lot of stuff in our bodies, you know, that we just need to be more self-conscious. All we're doing with these sites is just bringing in that, that education. But having, again, just to end with all of these, um, the benefits are we have cleaner air, cleaner water, we reduce our hazardous waste, increase access to healthier foods, safer outdoors, improve population health and overall everything. This is where we want to be at, right? So. Francis, uh, Chico Xavier wrote this book, Artila da Natureza. It's just a bunch of poems that really talk about nature. It's a beautiful book. And it, just the first cap says, nature is the vast farm that the mm -hmm. Father has given to all create creatures. Each detail of the valuable heritage has particular significance. 
the tree, the path, the cloud, the dust, the river, the river reveal silent and spe special messages. It is necessary, however, that man learns to withdraw to listen to the great voices that speak to his heart. Nature is always the blessed storehouse of motherly lessons in her circles of service. Nothing remains without purpose, without just purpose, right? And he says the vibrating heart and the refined sensibility came close to Jesus to bring to the ears of his incarnated companions some notes of this universal symphony. So close our eyes and I even think about this. Now we have that awareness, we can change it. Just because that is happening, it doesn't mean it needs to stay that way because sheep was bringing us, hey, just rechange that. Just, just think about nature in a different way, right? And so it's a, it's a beautiful way. Um, okay, so the moral education is super important. I think that's to to end with that. Um, I didn't get to type the, the what I wanted to, but I'm gonna read here what Joanna and Divaldo say because it's so important that as we end this lesson today, we think about everything that was presented here, a little bit of the spirit to science and the science and what's really happening. And then Chico reminding us about just to see nature. It all lies in our moral education. So um, it says here, indeed, it's not about setting up philosophical mm -hmm. or religious mm -hmm. behavioral programs dictated by partisans of specific ideology. And this is it. it is about transmitting universal mm -hmm. guidelines about duty, solidarity, love, understanding, citizenship rights, and above all and foremost, respect for everything and everyone, always working to achieve self improvement and personal growth, and by extension, that of humanity, which includes all of us. All right, dear friends. So now, um, it just to end, uh, this is where we end, right? Because we are all learning and, and growing that moral sense of ourselves. We are heading into this new humankind and we can imagine the amazing things that are bound to happen on planet Earth. And it's gonna be us coming back in a different state already. But look at everything that we've been through to be where we're at. All right, dear friends, thank you so much. I'm gonna stop sharing and I hope I did okay with the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you. You know, Nara, um, it was so good to see like all of this scientific information that you brought and everything because the, just the, the, all of this just lends us to think about the responsibility that we have to take care of all of this, right? And um, as you were saying, the things that came into my mind were... Um, well, as you mentioned at the beginning on chapter 14, 14 from the Genesis, we see that there is this universal fluid that creates and it's, it's embedded in everything, including nature. And then the way that I feel about nature is nature is the, is the most pure essence, divine essence. And that's one of the reasons why whenever we feel like we need to re-energize or to just like, we need something, we go to nature, right? We go to the ocean, we allow the waves coming and then make the cleansing or the waterfall, or we see the trees. So it's really this divine essence materialized to support us in this journey. And I think that only by having that is the huge responsibility that we have also first to give back because if we know that the nature is also is responsible to receive our energy clean it and deliver it back in form of love what is the type of energy that we want to give to mother earth you know so i think that um it was really beautiful i do i do think um that it is, it is our responsibility as individuals to understand how we can contribute. I know that the big, big changes are not going to come from individuals as us, but it is our responsibility to claim that for whatever company we buy or whatever company we work with and so on. Because, I mean, it starts with one, but now we have... 20, 19 people in here and who else more we can talk and really manage to take care of nature. So 
Thank you, sister. God bless you. This, um, is our, this is our planet and we, we do need to take care of it. It's been an um, ongoing issue, you know, how humans lack caring for all of nature, all of, all, all of it, the, the ocean, the trees, and, you know, all of these chemicals and stuff, and, and also the additives and chemicals in our food as well. And not only are we eating it, but when we throw it out, sometimes the animals are also eating it and it's hurting them as well. So it's a full circle, just like how you started off with Genesis and how we started off in the ocean and then gradually graduated to the earth. And then, you know, on and on, you know, we're, we're still responsible for what happens to this planet. We all must do our part. And, you know, it's so funny because yesterday I was saying, how do you clean these plastic tubs? It drives me nuts because I don't want to use those harsh chemicals and bleach and whatever. I said, let me go in here, YouTube. I'm always telling somebody, go to YouTube. I YouTube, simple thing. Everybody always talks about Dawn dishwashing liquid. I put Dawn dishwashing liquid in, then put your uh, white vinegar in there. Lo and behold, I said, look at here, look at here, this, it works. And if it's real thick and brown, you put baking soda down, put a hot a towel in hot water, let it sit for 20 minutes and then go in and I'm like, wow, there is a way, there is a way. So thanks, Nora. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Nora, oh my goodness. It was amazing. I really appreciate from the beginning to the end, every words, everything you said, very, very uh, instructive and great reminding uh, to all of us. Uh, seeing all the, 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 the scientists that you brought together from the old to today's uh, minds, seeing their minds, their, uh, their point of view, um, I remember Dr. Paulo said, oh, when someone asked about why so many illness on the earth today, why people are dying, and you know, Dr. Paulo said, Dr. Paulo is a, one of the spiritual mentors of uh, Bezerra Spiritual Healing Center, and uh, he's a, one of the directors, so the spiritual director, so he said, because food because the modified genetic on the food, the, the digestive system is not made for this change. He said, that is why we get sick so easily. And, and the second part was the, the mental instability of the human beings about fears, angers and hatreds. So, uh, and I said to him, I asked him, Dr. Paul, what can we do? And he said, organic food, <laughs> eating naturally, as we have been since the beginning of the Genesis until today, things have, things have been not modified, thankful, for the, the, the keepers, uh, minds of the great spiritual human being who descend to earth to keep natural things going. And uh, the second part, uh, so eating healthy, it was is the, one of the best uh, advice he gave to us. And moral transformation, that is the best, no? one of them. And uh, he said, column cleansing. Colon cleansing because you will be learned to detox your body. And he loved vinegar too, you know, not just for the clothes or for cleaning the houses because you can use vinegar to clean, to do a lot of things. But he said, make use of vinegar to help to clean, detox your system, your organ system. I appreciate, uh, it's a great help for all of us uh, really appreciate this. Thank you so very much for your time, for your teachings. A great teacher. Appreciate that. 
appreciate. Thank you, sister. Does anyone have more questions or comments? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Nora, th thank you very much, Nora. Great presentation. You know, during your presentation, you trigger my imagination and to think that at this very moment, new worlds are being formed and in different stages of evolution, all in the preparation for the miracle of pro pro uh, the miracle process of spirituality. I'm sorry, of spiritualization of matter and continuously evolutionary process of evolution of the spirit. So that's all on the introduction of uh, the spirits book that talks that uh, God's creation never stops and it continues. So there are at this very moment, new worlds being formed and know for the purpose of uh, evolution of the spirits and vice versa, because every matter it exists for the benefit of the spirit and the spirit exists for the benefit of matter. So that's the process of transformation. And uh, the more we evolve, the more aware we become, the more educated, the more understanding the, what you, what you call the, not, not the physical, but the quantum physical aspects of life that brings us to understand this whole process and brings together our responsibility to work in synergy with all these contributors, all these benefactors that are supporting the process of evolution. So I really appreciate your presentation. Very enlightening. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. And I just want to one more remind, if you allow me, is about, I remember Jesus. He came from a family that was from the Essene. The Essene, I think say Essene, Essenius, Essenes. Yes, Essenes. So the Essenes was one of that time of Jesus on earth, was on the great protectors of nature, teaching us how to plant, how to eat naturally from nature they do not kill they were complete uh organic uh raw or vegetarian a uh, group that teach that time two thousand years ago over two thousand years ago how to respect nature how to be healthy and how to eat well and preserve nature so in today's environment, we see the climate change because that is very important, very educational uh, teachings for us today. Uh, we will say, oh, nobody's doing their part. Let we do our part as a Christians. If we're doing our part, follow the great examples over, over there. We can make our life better. We can bring the world uh, together one day. Because if you think that way, why Jesus have come on the earth? Does not need, no? So, but he came because he believes on us as a children of God and that on our divine intelligence that one day will be modified everything. And that is why we are transitioned to a great world, uh, a regeneration planet. Thank you again. Great reminder, Tanya. Thank you. Um, brothers, Adriana is now nursing Ian, so that's why I took over. Um, let us take a two minutes break. It's 11.13, let's, let's resume on 11, 11 right? 11.13, let's resume on 11.15, and um, we will do our hands-on healing. So make sure that you bring your bottle of water and write your, down the Your beans. water, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and also we always keep working with those who need vibrations so if you feel if you want you can send us the name through the chat box we will keep working um, with those names along the week and all the the work that we keep doing two minutes <laughs> <laughs> 